Let's review Wolverine number 49, chapter 9 of Sabretooth War from Victor Laval, Ben Percy, and Jeff Shaw on art. They promised the most bloody, chaotic, horror-filled Wolverine story in the history of Marvel Comics, and they delivered that, at least to the very beginning. It hasn't really been that for quite some time. And there's a big uh, bait and switch on this one, Doc. The cover had Wolverine in that goofy, stupid armor trying to kill Sabretooth, and at no point do they even come into conflict. No, it says the Animanium armor unleashed. It is never yeah. unleashed. No, He, he shows doesn't... up with the Animanium armor at the end. And doesn't really do anything. I mean, he fights Graydon Creed, sort of. Don't care because nothing about it is even remotely interesting. The bad part is we've got Victor Laval writing and then Ben Percy. And you can absolutely tell when Ben Percy's writing an issue versus Victor Laval. And this is a Victor Laval issue because it's all about Creed. And every time he writes one of these and he's the main writer just so they can end that stupid saber tooth and the exile story that no one bought. So they just threw it into here. It just fucking sucks. Since Victor Laval came on to saber tooth, what, two years ago? From issue number one, he has not given up this weird obsession with commentary on the fucking justice system and restorative justice versus punishment and blah, 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 and his obsession. Honestly, he feels like the fake imaginary white guy in there that looks like Doug Ramsey but isn't. That's absolutely certain everybody can be rehabilitated. Creed spends this entire issue proving some people fucking can't. Let's get into the comic book itself because we do need to talk about the art from Jeff Shaw because he absolutely wastes a, a pretty well illustrated Jeff Shaw issue here. There are a lot of flashbacks that do contain at least some gore and violence and stuff in it, thinking about the things that Creed has done in his past. You know, he, he demonstrated a lot of skill, actually, in this book. He aped a number of different classic Sabretooth artists' styles. He aped Mark Textera. He tried to ape Joe Mad. It was a little meh on that tried um a little bit on chris boccolo he demonstrated a lot of unique style on this as an artist he has a very wide range of um ability just for it to do nothing there's a lot of really menacing poses from creed and then that's about it he's definitely the mvp of the book it's it's not even close this is the one reason to read this book it, it's not quite at the level where it's good enough to um, you know, still buy the comic, but ignore the word bubbles and just make up your own story to go with the cool art. Not quite at that level, but it is very, very good. This isn't a Wolverine story, even though it's called Wolverine. This is a Sabretooth story. Almost everything in this comic book is dedicated to Sabretooth himself, including lots and lots of therapy sessions in his mind with what appears to be Doug Ramsey. And I guess he's taking him back through time and experiencing the crimes or murders that Sabretooth committed over his life, but from the perspective of the victim, as if this was going to make all of a sudden Creed realize that maybe he should have been a better person. It's this weird attempt at empathy, but he's using Creed's own memories. He starts with Silver Fox when Sabretooth killed Silver Fox, then goes to Birdie. Whatever this thing is that's, that's affecting Creed, he wants him to experience it from the victim's perspective and feel the victim's fear and this and that, but he's using Sabretooth's own memories. Sabretooth doesn't have the memories of the people that he killed fear and terror and the feeling of dying. Didn't make any practical sense, and we can focus on that, but you have a guy that relished murder. He got a glow from it just because he gets to experience it from the perspective of the victim that's going to make him regret it? Or do you think that's going to make him, you know, get off on it fucking more? I'll, I'll tell you, there was a moment where he's thinking about, I guess, a mas masseuse that he murdered. And I thought he was going to take advantage of himself. I know, exactly. It's a literal psychopath. Him knowing how scared his victims are is going to make him regret it? Or do you think it's going to make him like it more? It, it was weird because it's pretty much established that Sabretooth is a serial killer. He's the antithesis of Wolverine. He's incorrigible. He can never get better. It's not Doug Ramsey. Who is actually trying to talk to him? Is it the Venus flytrap that caught him? I feel like it's somehow still connected back to the Krakoan pit. Uh, but Krakoan uh, left the island. It's, it's I on know. the run. I can't tell 
who he thinks is the one actually doing this. Honestly, it's Victor Laval. There's your answer. The only thing that makes sense really about this is Victor Creed rejecting all of it. And you're like, what are you, stupid? I like murder. I am who I am. And I've done all these things, fully conscious of what I'm doing. I don't feel like I need to be rehabilitated. I feel like I am the man that I always wanted to be. And he emerges from the Venus fly trap unchanged. It's proving that he is unable to be altered through screwing with his mind. The same way that Wolverine popping his claws through Sabretooth's brain didn't fix him. The way that Xavier working on his brain didn't fix him. The way that Birdie being able to give him the glow after murdering people. Birdie was able to give him that because she was like a low-level telepath because she was able to feed that thing for him. That didn't matter because he still ended up murdering her. I guess this whole point is that Sabretooth is utterly and completely irredeemable. But we already knew that. Yeah, I know. None of this is new information. I don't know what new story Victor Laval is trying to tell here, except for his weird obsession with commentating on the prison systems. The other big portion, I guess, of the comic book, even bigger than Wolverine still, is Bad Seed. And I guess Bad Seed was the worst version of Victor Creed's kids that he thought would become more powerful than him. So he like tucked him off in some pocket multiverse or something. I'm not really sure. He imprisoned him. He's basically like half robot. And you've had the rest of the Creeds that were left trying to finish off the X-Force and Krakoa and all that stuff. And then they brought out Bad Seed because they lost faith in Victor and he's turned on everybody, and he's in charge of a sentinel. He destroys all the other sentinels. He destroys all the other creeds and believes that he is the only one left. I guess maybe he saw, he also wants to defeat Wolverine. I'm not really sure. It was Graydon Creed. He was in charge of Friends of Humanity. He and Mystique had a baby, and it ended up purely human, and it ended up hating mutants like absolutely and completely and becoming a politician that is trying to kill and take out the mutant race that's how you make somebody worse than than um than saber tooth instead they just decide to take a bunch of bits and pieces of other mutant characters and their history because this has little pieces of cable with him being half connected to robots and sent off to some pocket dimension or future or whatever in order to get better but it also reminds me of cable's kid genesis that ends up becoming holocaust because he ends up somehow absolutely terribly worse it's like hey did you just read like skim the the cliff's notes on cable and decide to make graden creed into him but evil we already had that it was called strife nothing here is new and it's just really, really boring watching him try to kill mutants, but then also taking out the Sentinels that are also trying to kill mutants. Seems really, really fucking retarded. And then his Sentinels about to blow up. He decides to take everybody out with him, but then he's just left on the ground fighting Wolverine in the ocean next to Krakoa. Speaking of Wolverine, there ain't much of him in here. I think maybe he gets three, four pages at max. There's some really stupid stuff in here. You know, the adamantium armor, clearly a marketing gimmick. It's a first appearance, Doc. This thing could be worth $7 in 15 years because we got the first appearance of the adamantium armor. And he's just like verbally filleting the fucking exiles. And at one point, before he drops down to the surface of Krakoa to formally encounter Bad Seed, he like goes forehead to forehead. And tells one of the stupid exiles, is like, you're the greatest. I was like, Wolverine going forehead to forehead with a worthless mutant for no reason. I don't like Wolverine anymore. We've reached that point where I don't like Wolverine anymore. I didn't know that that was possible because it's not him. I blame Jason Aaron for it, and I don't get it. Why Wolverine has this weird father syndrome when it comes to Itty? They, they never explained why Wolverine just somehow became her like dad. Then she ended up in prison for reasons I don't fucking know and decided to go evil, join Sabretooth and his exiles to get out of there. And now Wolverine completely forgives her and being her dad again. I blame Jason Aaron because none of this stuff existed for any reason until he just stuck it in there. I ruined the fucking character of Wolverine. Well, the adamantium armor ain't much better. 
And it says Adamantium Armor Unleashed on the cover. That doesn't happen. He jumps down, and he does encounter Bad Seed in a panel, but at the same time, we've got the actual Sabretooth re-emerging from the Venus flytrap, and we're going to have a three-way dance apparently in the finale. Hopefully that's written by Ben Percy, so there'll be some action and maybe some stakes or consequences, because uh, Victor Laval absolutely destroyed this fucking event and what it could have been. Victor, this idea has failed in two series so far. You're doing it in a third fucking quit it nobody cares at this point nobody wants to listen to you go away go back to whatever you did before comics three of the first four issues of Sabretooth war were actually pretty fun and they were certainly gory and i was recommending i was like hey this is better than i anticipated despite victor laval being in there that's because but, victor didn't have anything to do with it yeah but once he clearly took over the story and it became about Sabretooth and the exiles uh, the thing just has been listless and lifeless and boring, despite good art in, in a couple of moments here and there that are somewhat exciting. I don't think the adamantium armor uh, works for the character. I think it's a stupid concept. It's clearly a, a money grab, a cash grab or whatever. Completely soulless like everything else going on with the X-Men these days. I don't particularly recommend this comic book. It's got art. It doesn't have any heart. It doesn't have a good story. But the art is good, so I would give it like a 2 out of 5, maybe like a 4 out of 10. You know, look at the art. It looks nice. And it's just, it's a failed opportunity because Sabretooth War did start out pretty decent. I think you're being really, really generous on this. I would say I'm not buying this. I don't recommend you buy this. I give this a one out of five because of the art. If it was just for the story, it would get a, you know, like 0.25 out of five. I think you giving it a two is incredibly generous. I feel like my one, my one star is extremely generous. And that's only because the artist managed to homage Mark Texiera and um, Chris Boccolo fairly well at different times in this book yeah so that was uh, not a recommend what a disappointment we've got one more issue in this and then we got the big x-men reboot happening if you would like more coverage on that more reviews and lots of reviews about this new x-men reboot because doc and i are going to cover a lot of it you do need to go over to think critical patreon and you will get this entire review when we record it it's about 22 minutes when it's on youtube it's going to be about 12 minutes we'll also get the fully unedited version of the conversation about tom report's interview this week as well definitely check that out if you want some more doc in your life there's a link in the video description